Welcome all. Welcome to this lab of advanced job programming. Today we will be uh, devising the concept of exceptions uh, as a part of Java fundamentals. Uh, then from next week we will be starting with advanced Java programming. So let me first show the disclaimer. Okay, so let's start now and uh, let me take you directly to the part of exceptions. Okay, so check this out. This is exception 01 class in which what I've done is in this I've taken static variables. This is exception 01 class in which I have taken static variables. So these are class variables. These are what? These are class variables. So they can be accessed by class name. Okay. By saying uh, exception 01 dot A. Okay. It's like exception 01 dot A. In this way, you can access any of these variables. Right? Then, uh, basically, you know, after that, we also have a method called method one. Okay, and uh, then we have main. Now, in main, we are calling this method one. So, what happens when this when this uh, class runs? The control enters first over here. It's an entry point of execution, and it sees that the uh, while executing, it sees that method one is called right over here. So it will jump to method one. Control will jump to method one. And uh, so let me show you what is the code in method one. Okay. So check this out. In this, uh, in this code, what happens is control first enters me. From there, it goes to this method one. So from here, the control jumps to method one. Now here we have a code. This is the code of this method one, where we have got try catch. Finally, to handle some exceptions. Okay. That exceptions might come due to the error in the code or might be coming due to a wrong input given by user or maybe some other issues. Okay. So here what we have done is here check this out. The static variables are we know that whenever the class is loaded, the static variables by default have since these are integer static variables, by default the value they get is zero. This is the value by default assigned to them. Even if we don't assign any value, these are assigned value zero. Okay. And uh, so what happens is, what do we try to do is, we try to uh, assign it a, a value 10, and then we try to divide a by b. Okay. So check this out. If I assign a equal to b equal to 10, right, and then I say a divided by b, right. So what will happen is in this case, in this particular case, this is a good case, okay. So here control enters over here, from here it goes to method 1, right. It, uh, it sees a equal to b equal to 10, that's fine. Then it executes c equal to a divided by b, that's also fine. Now from here, where will the control go? Since there was no exception, right? Here, what will be the result of, of C? The value of C would be obviously one, right? 
then from here where will the control go control will not go into the catch no it will go to finally even though there was no error it will go to finally okay and then this finally printed that will get printed and method one executed that's printed afterwards okay so this part executes okay so from here the control goes to finally and this part executes then and from there the control comes back at this location after method one okay from there the control comes back simply to this location we can say and then it prints the value of t so this is the ideal condition control goes control comes back and then control exits properly this is the entry point of the control and when we start running the program and this is the exit point of the control when the program ends so entry and exit points both are executed properly that's what we aim to show with this ideal scenario okay so if i run this uh, but i think it will run a wrong program so let me let me run this exception 01 i'll say run file and there it is you can see that uh, it says finally printed method 1 executed and the value of c is now become 1 by default which was 0 has become 1 okay but the same thing we don't give this value to b only to a and what will happen this will be equivalent to saying that uh, will be equivalent to saying that c is equal to 10 divided by 0 Obviously, this would give you error, right? So this is not possible. So it will give you error. So here in this scenario, what happens? Control enters in the main and sees method one has been called and goes to method one. Okay, it enters the try catch, executes this part. Now on this line, what does it do? It throws an exception. It generates an exception, right? So from here the control goes to catch. Since we have caught the exception over here in the catch statement, we are lucky. The program will execute properly now. So what it will do is it will print the exception and finally printed. So from here after catch the control goes to finally, and from finally the control comes out properly. Okay. Executes the statement, and then from there, the control comes back to the main next statement after, yeah. and then it executes properly. What will be the output? Output will be specifically this exception, this finally printed. Okay, then this method one executed, and the value of C, which would be. Zero because this expression would not have taken place. So by default, the value of c, which is static variable, would be zero, right? So this is how the program executes. Okay. So if I now run the file, you can see over here that yes. Enter the exception. This is the type of the exception. This is the message of the exception given. Then it is printed finally, and then written method one executed, and then the value of c zero. Okay. But see now we can say that the the behavior, the execution of the problems of the program is good. Why? Because we are getting proper output. What if we don't use try catch? Then what will happen? Check this out. If I don't use try catch, 
Okay, just comment this part out. Okay. And now if we run this file, so we'll see that directly the exception has been occurred. It is not handled by the program. So this is the example, this is the output given by JV and that there is an exception in thread main. This is the exception and it was generated on line number 9 and the control came to this line number 9 and it is this method 1 from method main, method main called method 1. So this is where it was called on this line number 18. So the whole stack trace has been given, you see that? Stack trace is from where you have called this method, that is stack trace. So this is called as exception or error in program execution. So that is not good. So we need to handle these kind of issues. So for that, what do we do? We use try catch. We use, we use try catch. Now there won't be any issue. If we run this, your the output will be proper. Okay, this is the output. This is proper. You can see the color is also black. So that means that output is proper output. Now, which all things we did we use? We, we used your try, catch, and find. Right. Now let me show you one more example where we will use some other keywords or exceptions called as what? Called as specifically uh, throw and throws. Now, this is one of the biggest questions that is many times asked in uh, uh, interviews also. So what is the difference between throw and throws? Okay. Difference between throw and throws. So, check this out. This is the same type of class. In the same manner, we have designed the, this class exception 02 having static ABC method, uh, sorry, ABC variables, integer ABC variables, is a static, and static method method 1. Here also, what we are doing is, here also we are assigning values to AB. Here also we are trying to divide A by B. And then we print method 1 executed. And you can see what we are doing. We are specifically throwing an exception. We are saying throw new exception. So we are explicitly generating the exception over here. Okay. And uh, we are also doing one more thing. That is, we are defining that this method one throws the exception over here. So it means there is a possibility that method one may throw exception. Okay, there is a full possibility that method one may throw exception. So due to this particular point, due to this particular point, what happens is that the calling method, method that calls this method one has to compulsorily put that call in between try and catch. Or else it also has to declare that it will throw exception. Here in main, we are calling this method. You can see this method one is called over here. And here also we are putting try catch. We are covering that method call with try catch. Why? Because if we don't, then it will not allow us to execute only. Check this out. I'll comment this part out. Here you can see it gives you error. That's it. The compiler itself will not allow you to compile. Is there an unreported exception of type exception which must be caught or declared to be thrown? So either you catch it using try catch or you declare it like this previous method that it can all it will also throw the exception. So see if in order to remove this method, then we have two options. One is we take this, uh, this throws exception part, we take, put it over here also. That main, we declare that main and also throw exception. Right? That is first option. And the second option is we use try catch. So let's try to follow this first option. That is, yeah, we declare that this is throws exception. So you can then see now the error goes away. And if I run this file, 
right? It will give us normal output, but yes, there is one exception coming in after the normal output. Check this out. It says method one executed. Why? Because uh, you can see that uh, as soon as you call method one, control goes over here. It executes this much part, line number seven, eight, and nine. And then on line number 10, it throws the exception. Control goes over here. It executes this much part, line number 7, 8, and 9. And then on line number 10, it throws the ex exception explic explicitly. And we have declared over here. So what happens is, it's something like this. The control comes into this main as an entry point. It sees method 1 is called. It goes to this method 1 executes this part properly okay and then from here it gets thrown so the control comes control goes out of this method and jumps back to this particular line now it sees or uh, that uh, there is no exception being handled so what it does it it also gets thrown out of this method because there is no try catch to handle it. It has to be caught, but there is no catch statement to, to catch it. And it sees that this can also throw exceptions. So it will automatically throw. If no, if no, there is no try catch, it automatically throws. There is no need of saying that it throws exception. It automatically throws. That's it. But by declaring this throws exception, what we are doing is we are making it compulsory for the calling method to use try catch okay so see here what happened in the output this method one executed that that thing got printed but then the exception was generated okay and here you can see that the output is something like this exception in thread main type is exception and this is the message this is my exception that's what the message we gave while creating the exception okay so that's why that kind of message is coming. And uh, so if we don't use the strike throws exception, the second option is to use try catch. So if you don't use it, it will give us error. Right? It will not allow us to compile the program. You can see here the error is coming. Right? So what we'll do is we'll put try catch around this code. And the error will go away. That's it. See that? Error has gone away. Right? Here, I just, uh, what we did is, in the, we used the same previously used program, but now here we explicitly threw an exception. Okay. That's the main thing. Now see, if we throw new exception, we say throw new exception, and uh, if we just remove this part. So take this out. What happens is here. What did we do? Here we remove that this the third one throws exception. That declaration has been removed, right? But since as soon as we removed it, it started giving us error on this time. That this is an unreported exception which must be caught or declared to be thrown. So in this method one, either you catch it using try catch or you declare that you will not be handling it. Someone else will handle it. So that's why in this case, if you don't want to use try catch, then it becomes compulsory to declare that this method throws an exception. Okay, this method throws an exception. Okay, so that is the difference between throws and throw. What's the main difference? Throw will explicitly create a new exception and throw it out. So throw is basically used to throw an exception explicitly. Okay, it may be a new or old exception, but it is used to throw the exception. And throws declares that a method will or method can throw an exception. So the calling method has to handle it. 
there is a possibility that this method one may throw the exception. So the calling method has to handle it or has to declare it. So in the calling method main, this method one is called and we you see that we handle it. We did not declare that it is being thrown from this method also. We will handle it. Okay, we will take care of it. So that's the difference between throw and throws. And now if we see how to create your own exceptions. So check this out. This is a class basically that has got a This my exception class has been created. This is a custom exception that we have created by saying my exception, this class extends exception. So after extending an exception class, we have become an exception. My exception class has become a type of exception. It's a new type of exception, which has got properties like detail. And that detail can be assigned the value through constructor of this my exception. We pass some parameter to it which will be assigned to value detail or let's give it as number instead of detail let's call it as number so we pass a value and that will be given to number okay and when that exception is used in uh, when the object of this my exception if we use it in in print and in state print then it needs to be converted to two string so it's two string method will be automatically called so we need to declare a customized two string method so we declared our own two string method and, and we uh, overrid overrid the we overridden the two string method of the object class that is available to all the classes my exception would also get it since it's a we know that all the classes in Java are subclasses of object class. From object class, we get this two string method. So we are overriding the two string method. And this two string method is, is called whenever the object of this class is used along with strings or maybe used in print and statements. So it will return my exception and the number as a string. Okay. So check this out. What we are doing is we are also having one in this exception demo we are having two methods one is this compute and one is this main so in main what do we do we come we call compute with value 1 and with value 20 okay so what will this compute do is it will check the value and accordingly it may generate some exception and here you can see that this compute 1 and compute 20 these method calls are basically caught inside where inside try catch and here check this out here try is there and catch there are two catch multiple catches are there you see that and this multiple catches in this multiple catch one is this my exception another is exception okay so if this try part throws and super class exception then it will be given to so it throws an object of super class exception then it will be given to or we can simply say that if this try block throws my exception then it will be given to this first catch and for all the other types of exceptions which are nothing but subclasses of exception class those objects will be given to this catch so we handle our own special exception type also and all the general types of exceptions also right this two catch statements okay and then we can also have finally we can also give finally in this finally what we can do is uh, we can simply say we can simply say finally printed okay or we can say we can say finally printed okay and uh, here we can say my exception caught 
what can we say we can say my exception caught and we can here we can simply say exception caught okay so one catch would explicitly catch my exception object one catch would catch all the other types of exception object and then finally is there okay we just say finally so so in main we are calling compute one and compute two. So let's see what happens in this compute method, which is static method, and it can throw my exception. So see if since we have declared that throws my exception, that's why we have to catch it. If we don't catch it, there will be an issue. Okay, at least we have to catch exception. It's super class. So okay. So see if we don't use this my exception type over here. And also that's okay because we are at least catching the exception type, which is a super class of my exception. But if we remove this exception, then also that's not worry. Okay, but we will not be able to catch any other types of exceptions if we remove this exception cost. Okay. See what happens when we call compute one. This one gets assigned to this A okay. and uh, here what do we say we say called compute with value A and then we check if the value of A is greater than 10 then explicitly throw new my exception with value A but uh, now specifically that uh, Thing will not happen because the value of a is not greater than 10. So the controller will go over here and it will print normal exit. It says first the output is called compute 1 and then says normal exit. Okay. Then it's a turn of compute 20. So again from here the control goes to compute. A is assigned value 20. It prints called the compute 20. It checks a is greater than 10. Yes, it is greater than 10. So obviously it throws uh, my exception with value 20 okay. and from here directly the control goes out of this method and goes to this particular location since we have declared that we are throwing in my exception we can throw my exception this method can throw my exception it automatically goes out so in this case you can say in some situations, there is a possibility that my exception may be thrown, and in some cases, there is not a possibility that my exception may be thrown. So that's why still we have declared that it throws my exception. This compute method throw my exception. Okay. So the calling method has to handle it anyhow. Okay. And so what happens, the control will come to this statement, this line, and it will say my exception caught. Okay. So let me run this file, so you'll get to see the output, and you'll come to see, to know what has happened. Check this out. First, what happens is, on compute 1, and then normal exit. Then it calls compute 20, since the value of A is greater than 20, it throws an exception, but that exception is caught, so we say my exception caught. What do we say? We say my exception caught. This is the value. Now, see, we have printed uh, my exception. Check this out. In this catch part, we say my exception caught. And E. What is this E? That is the object of my exception that was thrown from this compute 20 method. So, That object is directly getting printed, right? That object is directly getting printed over here in system.out.println inside that statement. So when that object gets printed, that two string method gets called and the string my exception and in square brackets value of A is printed. You see that? 
This is what we return from two string, and that is what it is getting printed whenever it is used in print and statement. The object is used in. We don't need to explicitly call two string method. You see, over here we don't call this two string method. In this catch, in this system dot out dot println, we do not say e dot two string. This is equivalent to saying e dot two string. Whenever there's exception object, whenever any object. Is concatenated to a string, right? That will automatically get converted into string by calling its two-string method. Okay, so the two-string method specifically returns the string like this. My exception in square brackets the number, right? So that's why you can see over here it is my exception. And twenty, and then finally gets called. Why finally gets called? Because there was not a normal exit from the previous method. It had thrown an exception. So this particular method has to, you know, it has to. And how? If it even if there was no exception thrown, then also it will go through finally. Check this out. Check this out. Here, if I remove this call of compute twenty. Okay, I just do what I will. I'll specifically com comment it out. And then I say run file. Okay. So now here you can see call compute one normal exit. And then also finally, why finally? Because obviously control passes through through this finally code. Control passes through this through this finally code, even if there is no error from this try catch block. <coughs> even if is, there is no uh, try catch generator or okay, any any uh, exception generator from try catch. Then also this finally gets executed. We know that, right? So that is how it executes. And now if we comment this out, we remove the comment and we run it. You can see that's the output. Compute one call, normal exit. Compute twenty, exit with an exception, and finally. Why finally is coming over here? Because what happens is. First, this executes. Then this executes. It's not like that. This is executed. Then finally, we execute again. This line executes. It's not like that. First, whole try block execution gets completed. Then, if there is an exception, or in between, if there is an exception thrown, then the control will go to catch. If there is no exception being thrown, then at least it will, it will go through finally. So there are two possibilities. Which are the two possibilities? When the try is executing, the control will go to a catch statement, and from there it will go to finally statement, and then from it there it will exit. Right? Or what is the second way? Second way is the normal way that try is executing. There was no exception, so there is no need to go to any catch. It directly goes through finally, and then it exits. Yeah. These are two sequences that may happen when you are using try catch. Okay, one more thing is this. Please make sure. So this is a hierarchy. You see, it's like this exception class. This is exception class, and this is an exception class. Okay. What is this exception class? Exception class is extending from exception class. Exception class is ex extending from exception class. Okay. Or this exception is what? This is super class, and this is. Sub class, right? So the super class basically 
uh, any any exception object that would be thrown from this try catch from this try block okay. if it is my exception then only it will be caught over here for any other exception that will be caught over okay. so the main thing is in order to use this uh, hierarchy with try catch block we have to use it in reverse manner so the first we have to catch my exception and then we will catch exception it's not like that we first we can catch exception and then we can catch my exception no that will not be allowed okay so take this out if i take this part and i put it over here so it is equivalent to saying that from this try on this try block whenever any exception gets thrown from the try block it is going to be caught in this exception any type of exception can be caught in this because exception class is a super class of all the exceptions right so even if it is my exception then also that will get caught over here so since my exception is already get caught over here then why why are you catching it in a next catch block in fact that catch block will never execute never at all execute okay and if you see id is also giving us the error this it means id is also giving us the error saying exception my exception has already been caught we have not caught it but still we say it says it has been caught why because this exception can catch all the sub types of exceptions so it's better to use the sub type before and super type afterwards by catching the exceptions make sure you remember this part then you are using try catch you put this sub class of exception before to be caught and then the super class to be caught afterwards and then in the end finally it's not like that finally can come about catch no that is also not possible okay finally should come after all the catches on okay and after finally there cannot be any catch statement okay so this is how we use the exceptions okay so what did we learn in exceptions today we learned how to use try catch and finally and what is the meaning of throw and throws okay and then we saw how to declare our own exception type and how to use it how to throw it out how to declare that method throws it and how to handle it right so that is what that is a use of exceptions so any doubts on this please do let me know okay i'll just stop the recording and we we can have a try